In order to do milling on a drill press, it is necessary to have some way of positioning the work and moving it back and forth in the X direction this way and in the Y direction this way. The uh, type of mill that I can use is a single ended uh, end mill. The one that I have here is a uh, four flute type. It's five sixteenths of an inch in diameter, which means five sixteenths <coughs> is the diameter of the cutting portion. The shank is actually three-eighths of an inch, which is well within the, the limits for this chuck. So I put it into the chuck securely. And there's a lot of lateral pressure when you're doing milling, so you want to be sure that this is good and snug. And it's necessary to bring the speed up fairly well because uh, the, the cutting speed for milling is very similar to the cutting speed for drilling. So I'm going to pop the belt up to a little higher speed and I've mounted a workpiece on the table of the XY table. You notice that I've used the T-slots with sturdy studs, with sturdy clamping uh, toes, and I have uh, step blocks under them so that they're clamped properly. Notice that the clamps are horizontal exactly parallel with the table and that's the way they should be. You don't want the clamp to be pointed in one direction or the other. You want the, the clamp to be exactly parallel to the table. Now you don't want any more overhang than you can avoid when you're doing this type of an operation. So I will raise this table as much as I can until I'm very close to hitting the, the uh, end of the mill and then I'll tighten it in place. Things have to be fairly snug because there's a lot of lateral pressure on the spindle and the drill presses are designed principally to take end thrust. They are less sturdy in the direction of, uh, of horizontal movements. But I can bring this down until I'm getting very close to the work surface. And now as I back off, I know that if I bring it down just a few thousandths of an inch more I'll be within cutting distance and I'm going to use my stop nuts as a means of controlling where I place the tool for its, its, the depth of the cut. Now when I run this back under, you see I'm already touching, so I run this down. I know now that I'm on my zero point. This is a 1 16th inch pitch. So if I go up about a quarter of a turn, I know I've taken about eight thousandths of an inch. I lock it in position. I back off. I bring the spindle down and I lock the quill. Now I put a little cutting oil across the surface. And I'm going to be able to mill a, a slot right across the top of that surface. I stop it to examine the work. You can see the beginnings of the groove that I'm milling. It's got a nice flat bottom and it's being cut evenly so the milling work is going quite well. The drill press is not as heavy duty for milling work as a, as a uh, milling machine. You work with it a little bit lighter but you can do useful work with it. I'm going to deepen the cut now. I'll raise my collars and I'll let the spindle come down a little more. You don't want to take a lot of metal when you do this. You're, you, you're taking a matter of maybe ten thousandths of an inch at a time. You don't try to rip out a quarter of an inch. I put a little more cutting oil in. And once again you can see that it's cutting cleanly and well. Now 
Now you can see I've deepened that groove and you can see what a nice surface I'm getting. Whenever I uh, advance the cut with a, with a milling cut, I always advance the cut so that it's working against the direction of rotation. In other words, if I want to widen this groove on this side, I move the table this direction, whatever amount I want, and you see the cut will be taken on this side against the direction of rotation. It will widen that uh, groove out. see the, the groove is widening. You can't feel the edge where, where it came across because one side is cut just as nicely as the other. It would be possible to deepen that groove any amount that I wanted or it would be possible to machine off this entire top surface to produce a, a uniform flat surface. Almost any of the cuts that you do on standard milling machine can be done on the drill press if you do them carefully. It is possible to use a fly cutter in the chuck and produce a broader area, or it's also possible to use smaller uh, end mills. The end mills that you have to use have to be single-ended because the chuck doesn't have the depth uh, to it for holding a double-ended mill. But by working carefully, you can do some acceptable milling work on the drill press.